Joe, what should we build while you're here? Mm, what about a Star Wars coffee table? If I build another Star Wars table, my wife actually might leave me. Well, you can just sell it. Oh, that's a good idea. Hey, Jeff, you're a Star Wars fan. What do you think? Oh, hey, Johnny. That's a great idea. Some may call it a midlife crisis, but I just call it a totally normal, healthy, but slightly overwhelming obsession with all things Star Wars. So even though there's no way my wife is gonna let me put another Star Wars table in my house, I'm gonna build one anyway. This is actually something a ton of you viewers asked me to build after my last Star Wars coffee table, and I've really been kicking around this idea for a while. I've had this curly maple slab sitting in my shop for almost a year now, just waiting for the right project. This slab is absolutely beautiful, but it does need a ton of cleanup. That was my buddy Joe in the intro, and we've been friends since we met at a woodworking conference about 100 years ago, all the way back in 2018. Joe flew in from Portland to Oklahoma City to spend the week designing and building this table. Now, this guy is awesome. He's got a master's in architecture, has insane 3D modeling and computer manufacturing skills. So with all that expertise, I immediately put him to work chipping bark off this hunk of wood. Money well spent on that education, Joe. But for real, Joe is a master at Fusion 360, which is a far more robust design platform than SketchUp, which is what I typically use. And to explain why I need his expertise, let's jump into the design so I can explain why Joe is going to be so vital to this build. So the top of the coffee table is going to feature a Star Wars diorama depicting the Battle of Endor at the Return of the Jedi, which is my second favorite Star Wars movie. The base of the coffee table is meant to have a Star Wars S spaceship design, and suspended on one end is going to be a wooden version of the Death Star. Death Star version 2 that was still under construction when it was 40 year old spoiler warning here, destroyed at the end of Return of the Jedi. Yeah. We're gonna make a wooden version of that out of walnut, and I needed Joe's expertise to model that up in Fusion 360 and create the 3D carving tool paths for the CNC to cut those out. Hey, Johnny, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm just watching an old video of mine, just being nostalgic. All right, let's get back to work. Alrighty, now it's time to pour the first layer of like actual epoxy, and for that, I'm gonna be using Total Boat's thick set casting resin. I'm gonna have that first layer of black, which should seal everything so I don't have epoxy from the outside, which is gonna remain black, and the inside, which is gonna be clear, and I'll have that Star Wars diorama going on. It's gonna not allow that to mix together later on. Also, my hair is crazy today, look at this. What the f is going on? I look crazy right now. Actually, fun fact, I, uh, I went for a man bun look this morning. It didn't look bad, but I'm like, I'm not ready to debut this yet, so. Coming soon to Johnny Builds, man bun. Nothing's more cool than a man bun, right? At least your mom thinks so. Add some of this black pigments, and I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it, so about that much is what I'll add every single time. I did it! Finally, and you didn't even see it because Jeff isn't here because he took off again, that bastard. So I finally make it into the trash can and it wasn't even caught on film. That first layer is about two gallons of epoxy, and I built what I'm calling the epoxy coffin so I could cover this pour, keep any dust or flies or anything else floating around in my shop from getting down into the epoxy. The shop is gonna get extra dusty as we start to build the Death Star, and for that, I picked up some four-quarter walnut, and before I can start cutting that into these segments, I need to mill that up in the holy trinity of woodworking tools, the joiner, the planer, and the table saw. Amen. Morning, gentlemen. Is that Derek from Malden? No, just been playing that game again. What game? I'll explain here in a minute. So to make the Death Star, essentially we're making like a big segmented sphere or a bowl or a sphere. I've been saying sphere. So to make those segments, I have to cut a whole bunch of little pieces and those pieces have to be really accurate. So that's where this little uh, thing called a miter set comes in. And this is what I'm gonna use to set my, this thing's called a miter gauge to make those individual cuts. You set one pin, right here in your zero, and then the other pin and the number of segments you wanna cut, and that's giving me my angle. So when I put my miter gauge in here, set it to that angle, I know I'm getting a perfect angle. There are 10 layers in the sphere, and I don't know what happened to me, but I cannot stop saying it that way. There are 10 layers, and each layer has 20 segments for a grand total of 198 individual pieces that I need to cut. Math. Am I right? Each piece needed to be cut and then sanded and then glued into the segmented rings. And this took most of an entire day. Joe, how long have you spent 
like CAD modeling everything we're about to do. Three days, like full three days. But all, I, all we do is push buttons. About 20 hours of CAD modeling and CAM modeling. Now we can push a button and hope that it actually works. We're gonna go ahead and do this first carve. We actually did a test carve off camera. And so this is what we're carving. This is the, the, the top and the bottom of death ball, as we call it. Death, death ball. Death ball, because you, you can't type S on your computer. S, W, or X. There's a link to a GoFundMe down below where we're, uh, we're raising money to buy Joe a computer, so. Uh, <laughs> so I can write Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Little sanding, nice rings. Looks great here with the grain that we wanted. Totally thought that through at the very beginning. Um, no happy accidents going on here. You know who likes happy accidents? Oh, yeah, exactly. Joe is all about finesse and carving in such a manner that your end mill never gets too hot. I'm more of a brute force CNC operator where I treat my CNC bits like they're going to battle with the wood I'm carving. Speaking of battles, the best battles take place in Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of this video. And it just happens to be their fourth birthday. Happy birthday, Johnny! Yeah! Guys, it's Raid's birthday, not mine. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that, Johnny. It is delicious. Anyways, come celebrate with me by playing the hottest mobile game out there with over 80 million downloads, amazing graphics, and over 650 champions with new champions being added every month. You all know that Raid Shadow Legends has been a big supporter of my channel, and I just want to take a second to say thank you to Raid and thank you to you for supporting my sponsors. Not only is Raid the best mobile game out there, but they let me have so much fun with these ad reads, like taking a cake right in the face. The support that I get from Raid Shadow Legends helps to keep the lights on here at Johnny Builds, so I really encourage you to check the game out. During Raid's fourth anniversary, there's a ton to get excited about. I'm talking dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, including a brand new fusion event where you can get your hands on an anniversary-themed legendary champion. With all of this stuff and more coming to Raid Shadow Legends, if you haven't started playing the game, what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. We're talking an epic champion, Kellen the Shrike, and a bunch of useful things like energy refills, magic potions, XP bonuses, and more. And since it's Raid's birthday, the gifts keep coming. New and existing players can get a bunch of free birthday gifts. So once you're in the game, after clicking all those links, just enter the promo code four years raid to get your hands on four legendary skill tones, plus a bunch of other useful stuff. Once you're in the game and you're crushing your enemy, come find me at Johnny Builds, and if you're fast enough, I'll let you join my clan. So just hit that link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Oh, God, it's really good. Come get some. We've let this cure for almost a full day now. I uh, just got dust in it, damn it. Here's my plan. I'm hoping that the interior situation is all like sealed off from the rest. What I have to do is like fill up all the epoxy on the outside because I'm doing this black epoxy on the outside and then the rest of my pores in the middle are gonna be clear because I'm making that Star Wars diorama. By the way, we didn't realize there was some controversy. I love Simon and Garfunkel, we know that. Bookends, one of my favorite albums. And me and Joe were listening to that record and all he's talking about is Paul Simon. Whoa, 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 don't forget about Mr. Art Garfunkel. Like he is. Simon and Garfunkel. And I didn't realize that not everybody understands that. Paul, he's just playing the guitar, doing some background singing. Mr. Art Garfunkel. He's the far superior of the two. And if you disagree with me, you're wrong, but I want you to leave a comment below and tell me. Who is better, Paul Simon, Art Garfunkel? It's Art Garfunkel. Who's better, Miley Cyrus or Hannah Montana? Honestly, I think when it comes to Simon and Garfunkel, you get the best of both worlds, you know? How's my hair? I tried wearing it down yesterday. It was like golden and arches. It was like very puffy. And, and then I tried a man bun this morning and it was like the tiniest man bun. It's a man biscuit. <laughs> oh, that got me. When I was a child, you know those little rain sticks? Remember those? It was like, I had one. Well, the end broke off. So little young burgeoning DIY Johnny <laughs> decided to fix it himself. So he goes and gets the super glue. Well, back in the day, you had to puncture the top of the super glue to open it. I was squeezing it and holding it and looking at it, and I go like this. That needle comes out, shoots in my eye. What do you think my initial response was? Wipe it. My hand is now glued to my <laughs> eye. My eye is glued shut. 
I rip my hand away from my eye, but my eye won't open. The next day, my dad takes me to an eye doctor. He cuts off all my eyelashes, proceeds to pry open my eye, and then with tweezers, like pull out the pieces from underneath my eyelid. Now safety is important. That's why I'm wearing my safety glasses right now. Like dirty dancing. Nobody does. Johnny. Gluing up these segments was way more difficult than I thought. On the first half that I glued up, I made the mistake of adding the curved piece to the top during the initial glue up, which made it really difficult to keep everything aligned as I tightened down those clamps. On the second half, I glued up all the rings, but left the top off. And this is gonna give me a 90 degree clamping surface on the top and bottom. And this really went a lot smoother than that first glue up. Then we had to figure out how we were gonna cut in a hole for that dish. So I screwed the top half to a board, and then I clamped that on to my drill press table and we had to find an angle to drill in with this Forstner bit that looked right. Now I had no idea how to measure and do this cut accurately. Even Joe with his master's degree had no idea. So we're just straight eyeballing it here. If I cut too steep an angle, the hole's going to end up with an oval instead of a circle. But I remember what Obi-Wan's force ghost said. Use the force. Johnny. So this is the 3 8 inch rod that I'm going to use to essentially suspend the death ball on the uh, coffee table base. I have to find center, so I cut out this little uh, jig on the CNC. It's the exact same radius as that. Take my 3 8 inch Forstner bit and find that perfect center. So now, I'm just gonna kinda use this in here. Eyeball my center. Like that. You see I had a little blowout. I'll just kind of sand that and pretend like that didn't happen. This time in the glue ups, I made these clamping blocks that has a recess cut in with a Forstner bit. And this allows it to sit down on the top of the dome without shifting too much as you apply clamping pressure. The dish is made from Purple Heart and I carved that over on Owen Wilson. Wow, 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 wow. This carve turned out a little bit rough, but we knew we'd get some blowout on the edges since they're so thin and we actually factored that into the design. It's always a good idea to, you know, have some fudge factor in your designs. It's something we actually do around my shop all the time. You might even say we're a fudge factory. In a world of pure imagination. We got the dish plug glued in place and Joe sanded everything flush. This thing is looking extra Death Starry at this point, but just like my grandpa always says. All right, you want to narrate this part? Sure. Too bad. Okay, so what we're going to do... <laughs> So the plan all along was to make this look like Death Star, I call it Death Star V2. That Death Star was not completed before it was destroyed by uh, Lando Calrissian and the uh, Rebel Forces. Yay! So just like his uh, 3D model here, and why is it not glued together <laughs> because yet? Because I've wanted it to keep it separate. <laughs> on this one, on this 3D model, what makes it really cool is you've got this outside 3D print, and then there's the uh, the pieces that go on the inside that kind of show the detail of it still in a construction. So that's what we're gonna do with our wooden death ball. So I'm gonna come in here with the jigsaw, maybe just kind of carve out a section like that. Then we're gonna take some of the same purple heart that we use for the dish. And we're gonna figure out a way to kind of stack it up in here. The interior of the death ball still has all those ridges from the segmented rings, which I need to carve away. And that's gonna make it easier to cut into in the next step. And you might be wondering, Johnny, why didn't we just have the CNC carve this angle in too? Well, one, it would have taken Joe two more weeks of cam modeling in Fusion 420. And two, we wanted to make sure we had enough surface area during the glue up. So it was actually easier this way. And it really didn't take me that long to to carve this out. Then I had to actually cut into the two halves and this thing has taken me so long to model and create that I was really nervous about this part. But in the end, I was really happy with the way that turned out. Again, I wanted a more simplified version of Death Star version 2.0 and I really like the direction this is going in. But given all that, I have no idea how we're gonna do the interior. Now, how do we make it shoot lasers and destroy worlds? Thunder we need uh, hmm. Galen Urso. Neither one of you know who the f that is. <laughs> Jen <laughs> Urso's father, the Empire came in and took him. Have was you not in, seen uh, Rogue One? Was that in Deep yeah, Space Nine? Yeah, we have seen Rogue One. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. that was Deep Space Nine. I'm a Star Wars fan. These fools. Fairweather. Fairweather. Baby Yoda's so cute. I just watched Mandalorian. Grogu! 
name is Grogu. Look, I know I come off as a huge Star Wars fan. And yes, I do put on my Chewbacca pajamas every single night. I climb into my Han Solo bed sheets, reach over, turn on my R2-D2 nightlight. But I'm just a normal 43-year-old man who might be making up for all the toys my parents wouldn't buy me as a kid. Well, guess what, Mom and Dad? I can afford my own toys now. Anywho, let's make the table base, shall we? All right, Joseph. One thing that I need you to know is yeah. that here around Johnny Builds, I don't make mistakes. No, I didn't think you did. But because Joe's in town, I did kind of screw something up and I'm gonna show you that now. Thanks. So the idea was to have this come around and then connect like like so. What I, I didn't account for, I was operating like my material was two inches in all directions and it's not. So as you can see, it doesn't line up. Too big in this direction, too tall in this direction. Hello, darkness, oh. my old friend. Right. What I did was I said, you know what, Johnny? This was a stupid idea anyways. How can I fix this without having to recarve these? I carve these bad boys. Now I'm gonna do something that you guys have never seen me do before in every single video that I've done here recently. Right Look at that there. one. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of something. <laughs> so we're gonna connect the top and bottom with dowels. It'll connect like this. I'm hoping, and I'm getting ahead of the uh, comments that you guys are gonna leave for me, but I'm hoping it doesn't come out looking like an ironing board because it kind of looks like an ironing board. But like a space ironing board. First, I have to glue up this end, which I'm gonna use some dominoes. And I made these clamping blocks because there's not gonna be a good way to clamp this. So this is gonna give me like a nice 90 degree uh, surface. Glue man, come together with your hands. Clamps. With your clamps. God, it was oh, right there. I know, I know, I know. I, I was just, I know, I was waiting. Early. Like... It's early, I'm just, no excuse. I'm just waking up. I used this no seal mold that I bought online, but I am not happy with this thing. It's like super thin and flimsy. So this is the one that I used in my last project and it's nice and sturdy and perfectly flat. The whole mold is kind of bowed. So what I have to do, put it on the CNC. I'm gonna flatten off those high spots or I build a new mold, put it back in the mold and uh, do the rest of the pours that I have to do. It only weighs 80 pounds okay. now. Easy, easy. Go ahead and set her all the way down. At first I was afraid. I was petrified. First I was afraid. I was petrified. I just got back from the second hand store. Look what I found. Anybody missing this? To flatten this, I'm using this monster three and a half inch bit. And I had no idea how terrifying it would be to have what's basically a Frisbee with knives spinning at 14,000 RPMs in my shop. Totally not necessary for this operation, but man, this thing was really cool and really messy. Now we're gonna do the diorama inside the void in this slab. This is something that I've seen done. This isn't original to me. The difference is I'm just gonna do it way better. I bought some of these little figurines. These actually go with this Star Wars X-Wing game. It's some card game that I have no idea how to play. The models are absolutely beautiful and just insanely detailed and perfect for uh, what I wanna do. Even the little dish, the dish moves. The whole idea for this table is it's a diorama of the end of Return of the Jedi when Lando and Nub Nub, I think that's the guy's name. He's the one with like the, the weird cheeks. They actually blow up the Death Star. The Millennium Falcon's gonna be flying away. It's gonna be pursued by a TIE fighter as the Death Star is uh, exploding. Yeah. It's like engulfing different TIE fighters that are chasing down the Millennium Falcon. Here, I'm gonna add some color to kind of represent an explosion. For the diorama, I'm using Total Boat's two to one high performance epoxy. You all know that Total Boat is a long time sponsor of mine. And don't forget when you support my sponsors, you truly help support my channel. And now you don't have to go to their website and enter some code to get a discount. All you have to do is click that link down below or go to totalboat.com slash Johnny Builds and you'll get a discount on all of their products every single time. Pretty awesome. Don't forget this table is available for sale and I'll have a link to my website listed down below and I'll just straight up say it. This table is not gonna be cheap, but honestly, there's no other one like it in the galaxy. So if you're a fellow middle-aged Star Wars fan with a man cave, maybe you just won the lottery, maybe this table is for you. Maybe Mark Hamill watches this video and 
buys the table and commissions me to build some more. We become best friends. That could probably happen, right? Anyways, call me, Mark. To give the TIE Fighters some battle damage, I used a torch to melt them, and they actually looked really awesome after I did this. I'm lucky I didn't burn my shop down, but this is a really cool effect. So as I finish out the rest of the diorama, this is a great time to say that I really appreciate all of you for subscribing and watching my videos. I mean, honestly, that is the best thing you can do to support this channel, especially now that this is my full-time job. We have so much fun in the shop on a daily basis, and honestly, that's all thanks to viewers like you. Now, if you're not already subscribed and you truly enjoy these videos and wanna see more, please do so, please get subscribed. We have all kinds of crazy builds coming up and we're moving into a bigger shop with bigger tools so we can pretty much build anything we want. It's gonna be awesome. But again, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you for your support. We also have merch available, including that classic Johnny Builds tee. We have the Wing It tee and we have a new addition to the lineup, World's Shittiest Woodworker. But hey, I still have all my fingers so far. This is the part of the project where we're just gonna straight wing it, otherwise known as around and find out. So we're trying to replicate this, essentially. To represent that on this, I'm gonna use some purple heart. Now, the trick is, is fitting this in here and kind of stacking it up and making something that kind of replicates that. My idea, though, is to take one of these templating things. I'll drop a link for it. Come in here and just find that profile. So now I've got that. I can scribe that on here and cut this out and then I will continue to stack these up until we have this all filled up. Joe was so certain this wasn't gonna work, but honestly, I know that it will. I mean, I am the world's shittiest woodworker, but I do know what I'm doing. I did, however, let Joe try his way knowing that his way wasn't gonna work, but after two weeks sitting behind a computer making 3D models and tool paths, I just wanted to let him have a little woodworking while he was here in the shop. And then this is what I come back to. Holy cow, dude. Yeah? Is this Whoa, gonna- Are you kidding me? Is this gonna work? That looks so good, man. <laughs> You're fucking killing it, man. Well, we're trying, we're winging it. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. My idea, he was right. He told me that this wasn't gonna work. He told me why it was gonna work. He told me I should do the little quarter inch pieces. And I was like, <laughs> let me try my idea first. I was wrong, Joe was right. And for that reason, please, go subscribe to his channel. <laughs> Seriously, this guy is awesome. He's been so much fun to have here in the shop. This is his last day, unfortunately. He's gonna start making a lot more content. Yes, picking it back up. It's been on for like three or four years, but I've been getting my master's, so things have been quiet. His master's in cutting wood. For real though, it was such a blast having Joe in town and working in the shop with us. He is about to dive headfirst into being a full-time YouTube maker, and it would mean a lot if you all went below and hit that link, subscribe to his channel, and go show Joe some love. But then it is kind of funny how he left right before we had a whole bunch of sanding. Very convenient, Joseph. All right, we're close to the finish line, but there's still a lot left to do to transform this into a finished piece, so it's time to kick it into hyperspace. Now you've made it this far in the video, which means you're probably a Star Wars nerd too. So I've got a question for you all. Which Star Wars property, now it can be a movie or a TV show, a book, an animated show, heck, even the Christmas special. The Star Wars Holiday Special. Which Star Wars property is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below and I'll pick one winner to win a Johnny Builds t-shirt and I'll ship that anywhere in the world. I've already told y'all my favorite movie is Empire Strikes Back. And if you disagree, again, you're wrong. I think my favorite Star Wars show so far has been Andor. That show is just, oh man, it was so good. But I, I do really enjoy The Mandalorian and this uh, most current season. I've just been loving all of that. And I know anytime I do a Star Wars theme build, I get a bunch of comments from people hating on the Disney-fied Star Wars stuff. Somehow Palpatine returns. And I'm just so happy to have new Star Wars. I mean, I grew up on this stuff. And it's not like listening to some new Bruce Springsteen album, which you 100% know is gonna be a vapid pile of uninspired garbage. It's Star Wars. I mean, I grew up on this stuff. I love it. So yeah, let me know what your fave is and you could win a Johnny Builds t-shirt. To get the death ball ready for final assembly, I sanded the two halves flat and then glued in those purple heart structures and then glued the whole piece together. And throughout this video, you guys have been seeing me use these Rockler parallel clamps and I love these things so much. Rockler is another longtime sponsor of this channel, so make sure to give them some love. Check out all the links I've got for their products down below.
Okay, after the death ball cured overnight, I sanded it up and filled in any gaps with wood glue and sawdust. I'm just gonna say it, because I know I'm gonna get a bunch of these comments. Clearly, this would have been much easier to do on a lathe. But honestly, I love that we did it the hard way. I mean, it was a huge design challenge to make the Death Star out of wood, and I couldn't have done this without Joe's help. Plus, honestly, I don't have a lathe big enough to do this. Also, as much as I love how the Death Star came out, I'm really not so sure about the base. I liked my original design much better, but it likely would have had strength issues supporting the heavy epoxy top. And I'm definitely not digging those maple dowels in contrast with the black stained oak. I actually made a last minute decision to stain the dowels with more India ink, and I think this looks way better. But also, I want to hear what you guys think about the table base down in the comments below, whether you liked it or whether you didn't. I took the pour out of the mold, and as I did, I managed the epoxy equivalent of slamming your finger in a car door. And now I know how Luke felt getting his hand chopped off. I feel you, buddy. I added a flag coat of epoxy to the bottom, and once that was all cured, I added stucco tape to the underside so those drips wouldn't stick. And there I'm trying to avoid sanding the bottom like I'm having to sand the top right here. I added two flood coats of Total Boat 2 to 1 epoxy and let that cure overnight. This tape trick worked fantastic. I didn't have to sand any drips from the underside. Also check out the N3 Nano Finish from Blacktail Studio. I've got a link for that down below, but N3 is compatible with any finish and serves to up the sheen and contrast, but most importantly, it adds protection. And if you aren't nano finishing, are you even finishing at all? Alrighty, with that, this table was done. So let me know what you guys think about this table. I've got it listed on my website. I've got a link down below. This table is listed for $6,000. I mean, is that worth it? Am I crazy? Honestly, I think it's worth every penny of that myself. And I think the right buyer would agree. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, make sure to go check out Joe's channel and give him a sub as well. All right, nerds. I'll leave you with the words of the wise Jedi Master Yoda.